Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a one-way ANOVA using Python 3 in Jupyter Lab. Now, the one-way ANOVA is a test that's often used to determine if there are differences in means between different categories. And um, it's a test I would use if I have a nominal and a scale variable. There are a few different ways we can actually do this in Python. I'll show you a few that require some packages and in the appendix you can find where I try to avoid packages as much as possible. Um, I would go with Pingoian or Stats Models API, uh, but if you have everything as separate list then the side by package might be more useful. I'll quickly show each of them. So to show you an example, I need some example data and I'll store that as a pandas data frame, so I'll install pandas or import it actually as pd. If you've never used the package before you sh can use exclamation sign pip install and then the name of the package that goes for any packages used. Once I've imported the package I can use its functions including read csv, so I'm going to be using that from pandas pd now, read c uh, csv and then read the data file. The head simply shows me the header, so the first five records. So that's just to get a small impression of the data. The example I'll be using is using as a nominal field the location and as a scale variable the overall grade. Now if I want to use Pingoian, um, I first need to import it of course. I'll import it as PG so then I don't have to type Pingoian every time. And then we can use its ANOVA function. That requires to input the depending variable, which is my scale variable, between, that's going to be the grouping variable, so in my case the location, what my uh, data uh, frame actually is, in this case I stored it as my DF, and I want to see the details, so it nicely shows it as a pandas data frame. And here is immediately the output. Now the output will show us the most important values for a basic analysis is the F value and next to it is the significance, the uncorrected P value and, and usually if that's below 0.05 we would say there are some, there's a significant influence of the location on the overall grade. You can find some more details about that in, on my website, this is mainly about how to perform it with Python. Um, you want to then often follow this up with a postdoc analysis, which I'll show in another video. We can get similar results if we use the stats models API. So if I import that one as SM, then I can use the ordinary least squares. Uh, so I'll actually need to import that separately. And then I can actually use it. I first need to define my model. Uh, which is the overall grade by location, still my data is my DF, and I need to fit that data, or actually need to fit that model. Then I can use the stats ANOVA LM function, and that will actually give me, as a result, the same results as you can see, the exact same F value, which is usually reported, together with the degrees of freedom there, and the same P value. You can also use SciPy, but like I mentioned earlier, for SciPy you need to have the scores in separate lists. So again, I'll select my nominal and scale variable, and then I'll first create a list of booleans for the first category, is where the nominal variable is demon, that was the first location, then Harlem, then Rotterdam. Those are lists of booleans, so true or false, which I can then use to go from my scale and set it to those booleans, so that I get the scores for each separate category as separate lists. Then to perform the one-way ANOVA I need to import side by stats, the F1 way ANOVA, and then I can use that function and simply feed it those lists of scores and that gives the exact same result, the 8 and the 0 0.001. It doesn't return the degrees of freedom uh, but they're not too hard. The between and the within is k is the number of categories and n is the total uh, number of scores used. So we can get those pretty quickly by the number of categories. If I take the unique values of my nominal, I get all the unique scores. So that's Demon, Rotterdam and Harlem. And then Len will tell me the length of that, which is in this case 3. And for n, I can create a cross table 
and use the nominal and the scale variable, then sum those up. I think it then first sums up the row, so that gives me the row totals, and then I sum those up, so that's why there's twice the sum to get the entire table total. So that's 3 and 48, and then I can simply fill out that formula to get my degrees of freedoms, and usually these first two are the ones that are being reported. Now if you really want in the appendix, I'll show uh, how you can go over the formulas one by one, avoiding packages as much as possible except for the F distribution itself to get the p-value, because that would be a little bit too technical to get into. Uh, I'll scroll down a little bit so you can see what's in there, but I'll leave a link to this Jupyter Notebook in the description of this video. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, perhaps I know the answer and I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching and that's the end.